Hi, I'm Kevin Tates with Gray Frederick from American Powertrain, and we're going to talk a little bit about why a hydraulic clutch setup is better than a mechanical linkage. So, Gray, in the simplest of terms for guys like me, why is hydraulic better than mechanical? Well, you know, uh, there's a couple of things that make a hydraulic system a lot nicer than a mechanical system. Primarily, it's that you get a smoother clutch action. So your mechanical linkage is moving around a lot before it does anything. Your pedal moves before it actually loads up the clutch. In a hydraulic system, every bit of your foot movement uh, calculates to movement of the clutch. So it's smoother. At the same time, there are some packaging advantages. When you go to put headers in with a mechanical clutch, a lot of times there's no room for both. Yeah, with the Z-bar linkage and all that kind of stuff in the old muscle cars, right? Exactly. This system very, very compact and easy to run around other components. Also, there's a lot of these cars that the mechanical linkage is just obsolete. You can't find it, or if you do, it's some rusty junk at a swap meet. You can get a new hydraulic system like new cars come with and modernize your car and get a very nice package. So explain to me why the old muscle cars have this vintage dump truck clutch that would wear your leg out in stop and go traffic. Well, you know, the old clutches, a lot of them were three finger. They required a lot of effort but they didn't give you much clamp load. So now that you have modern clutches and hydraulic systems, you get a system that's a lot easier on your leg and can still handle the power of modern engines. So you're harnessing the hydraulic power and not having to have your leg compensate for the extra pedal effort, right? Right. Okay. No more broken seats. No more broken <laughs> seats. I love it. I love it. So this is your Hydromax system. What makes this unique? Well, there's a couple of things that make this really unique. Um, We've got the top and the bottom of the system. This is on the front of your transmission, and this is on your firewall. This is the master cylinder. Master runs the slave cylinder. So when you're setting this up, you're putting this on your firewall, the hole in your firewall is always below and somewhere around the clutch pedal. But the angle that the factory set is actually the ideal for your clutch actuation to feel comfortable. So a lot of guys will just take a master cylinder and slap it on the firewall straight up and down and hook it to their pedal. Well, that'll work, but the ratio between the distance your foot moves and the distance this rod moves changes from what the factory set up. And that makes your clutch really hard. It'll make it feel like a Bowflex. So this actually is our Hydromax bracket. It's a stainless steel bracket that mounts on the firewall. And as you can see, it adjusts to the right angle. Right. So if it's sitting on your firewall like this, it goes up to your pedal at the original angle. So you end up with the same pedal ratio the factory set. You can even reduce the ratio if you want to a little bit by moving the hole on your pedal, but you can still get a much better feel. And this thing also allows for a little bit of a uh, mistake. So let's say the customer puts some holes in a slightly different spot than the factory intended. Sometimes you can adjust happens, out yeah. for that. With a fixed bracket, you've got no adjustment. You're just stuck wherever you put it yeah. or you're stuck drilling more holes. And with a threaded shaft, you can adjust the throw of the pedal, line up your pedals if you're, if you're really meticulous you want. You don't want your clutch pedal sticking up past the brake pedal. Exactly. So that gives you just extra adjustment, right? Exactly. So this is gonna have a steel braided line running down to the front of the transmission where this thing is. This is called a concentric slave hydraulic throwout bearing. There's lots of names for it, but essentially this takes the place of your mechanical throwout bearing. So what this thing does is it goes in the front of the transmission and it lines up with the fingers of the clutch. And when you fill it with fluid, this extends and presses the fingers of the clutch. No more fork, no more throw out bearing, no more Z bar or rods. That's all replaced by this system. So when we put this on, this actually just slides on here and onto this guide stud like that. And your clutch of course resides right here. So there's a little bit of math with setting this up. It's one of the things that our customers have a little bit of trouble with. We get a lot of calls. Um, so we're gonna demonstrate some of the math and why you're doing the math so maybe we can get more people up on what we're doing here. So when you say math involved, my eyes kind of glaze over, so anything you can say to simplify this process is gonna help guys like me. Well, I tell you what, let's take this thing onto the car and I'll kind of show you what we're trying to accomplish. All right. So we got the bell housing in place. We're measuring from the fingers to the flange of the bell housing, the back of it, right? That's right. So we want to determine how much space we have available for the throw-out bearing. So put your straight edge up there. All right, there we go. We're just going to take a caliper and line it up on the fingers of the clutch. If you want to move that straight edge in for me a little bit so I can get to that. And we'll tighten that up. And we'll get our measurement. So we got our measurement under the car. Now what? 
Well, now we're going to record the measurement, which was 2.424 inches. That's how much room we have for this throwout bearing. Now we're going to slide this throwout bearing onto the transmission and take a second measurement. And if you want to do straight edge duty again, I can do that part. I'm just going to put the straight edge flat across the throwout bearing. And we're going to measure to the spot where the bell housing touches the transmission. So this is really measuring from the same place. So that is the height of the throwout bearing without any shims. And that number is 1.705. So that's how much space this takes up with no shims, but we've got 2.424 inches of space to take up. We won't end up with somewhere around 150 thousandths gap. So we're just gonna subtract this out. So we've got 619 thousandths of gap between the face of this and the fingers before we put any shims in and we want about 150. So we're gonna subtract 150 from that. And we need to take up 469 thousandths or so with these stackable spacers. So each of these spacers takes up 90 thousandths of an inch. Right. So all we have to do is divide 469 by 90. So that gives us five spacers so when we stack five of these behind this bearing, right. it's gonna put us the right distance from the fingers so that this thing operates properly. Which is that eighth of an inch you were talking about on the car. Right. Right, okay. Well, that's not that complicated, man. No, it's really not. And the one other thing that I want to explain, because this is another big misnomer with setting this up, this throw -all bearing is made to sit very close to the fingers. And I always tell people it's a lot like your uh, brake pad will sit very close to your rotor. So you press your brakes, your rotor squeezes down, the rotor throws that brake pad off a little bit. The same thing happens here. So that gap that you just measured is gonna go away. This thing's gonna ride about 10 to 12 thousandths off the fingers. But as your clutch wears, the fingers actually get taller and you want some place for this to go so that it will self adjust. That way you don't have to keep pulling it apart and putting shims in it. Right, right. So that gap is for adjustment. It's not really part of the actuation. And all of this is laid out in your instructions, right? We have complete instructions. The kit comes with every fitting, line, the reservoir, all the pieces that you need to put it together and go drive your car, whether you have a three-speed, four-speed, five-speed, six-speed, all the popular manual transmissions are covered. Yep. And now you've got a video to tell people like me about. Exactly. That's awesome.